Hey guys, Alex J here. In this video, we're going to look at really improving our engineering game by learning a very few essential keyboard shortcuts for Pro Tools and best practices in regards of how to think toward different recording scenarios, which can really speed up our workflow. In regards to shortcuts, you don't need to know all of them by heart, but you should learn some of the most productive ones since they're there for a reason, to make our lives easier. That being said, here are some of the most useful ones that really make a difference. Command S saves the session. You should totally abuse this. Command E splices any audio selection. You're going to be constantly splicing stuff up when you're editing or moving stuff around, so it's a great idea to keep this a priority in your arsenal. Command Shift N opens the new track dialog. Once the dialog is open, you can use command left and right arrows to scroll whether the track is mono, stereo, or beyond, and use command up and down arrows to switch from different types of tracks available to you. While that dialog is open, you can use command shift N multiple times to create new different types of channels. Once you configure all these channels, hit on the create button. Shift command K exports any audio file. Use it anytime you do offline bouncing when you don't have any processing on the track. This is great for bouncing quick snippets, two tracks, instrumentals, or mixes, which have been printed into Pro Tools. If you don't understand what printing means, don't worry. We'll talk about it when we see hybrid techniques between Pro Tools and analog gear. Now, let's look at some important tasks associated with mouse clicks. Hold control and drag, not lose your place. This is essential for editing, especially when tracking vocals when on separation mode, which is the menu under the little hand in Pro Tools. Command and F equals batch fades. This is very useful for getting clean vocals quickly. See it in action in our Vocal Recording Lab video. Command and D duplicates your selection. This is great for when you're arranging musical parts and MIDI. Command and G creates a new fader group. This is essential when trying to mix or when trying to handle different faders at the same time. Command and M mutes the selection. This is great when you don't want to hear stuff. There's a couple of really useful gain fade commands you need to know. Control and D creates an end fade. And Control and G creates an out fade. Shift and R record arms the selected track. Shift Option 3 Consolidate. This is very important when consolidating a comp or when trying to rename a track so that the actual file has a specific name. Control and Backslash creates a new playlist. This is essential for recording, especially if you're doing overdubs. That way you can keep several different takes under the same channel. Command Control Backslash creates a new duplicated playlist. This is great for patching of vocals or any sort of overdubs. Use the plus and minus signs on the numeric keypad to control nudging. This is very helpful when it comes to comping vocals and the timing of a phrase. You can check out more references in our Vocal Recording Lab. By using Command and the opening bracket, you can zoom out the timeline. To zoom in, press Command and the end bracket. To switch between the mix and edit windows, press Command and the plus sign located at the top number row above the letters of your keyboard. Anytime you want to undo an action, press Command Z. The tilde or back quote scrolls through the edit modes. This is extremely essential, especially when tracking vocals. If you want to bypass a plugin, press Command and then click on the actual plugin. If you want to create a global change in several tracks that are not part of a group, just select them all and then press Shift Option and click on the function you want to change. This is great for when you're trying to solo or mute a group of channels. When you're building your I.O. layout and want to do a sequence of channels, you can use Shift Option Command and click on the actual piece of the I.O. you want to assign first. So check out this example. I'm going to select the track and select the input part of the I.O. But before I click, I'm going to hold Shift Option and Command. Check out how Pro Tools creates a sequence. Now let's go to the output part of the I.O. and do a similar change. As far as the numeric keypad, here's some really functional keystrokes. Pressing Option 3 will bring up the Event Operations panel. The Events Operations panel is very useful when tweaking MIDI tracks. You can select different quantization options, the option to input quantize, 
change velocity, etc. Pressing option 5 will bring the elastic properties menu. This is great when you're trying to do pitch changes without affecting the clip's time. Command 1 brings up the transport. Command K turns on the pre and post roll. Now let's look at the numbers on the numeric keypad themselves. The number 1 rewinds the playback head. Number 2 pushes the playback head forward. The number 3 puts the system in record enable and starts recording. If you're in quick punch mode, use it to go in and out of recording. The number 4 toggles the playback function between normal and loop. The number 5 toggles the record function between normal and loop recording. The number 6 toggles the recording function between normal and quick punch recording. The number 7 toggles the metronome on or off. The number 8 toggles the count off on and off. And finally, the number 9 toggles the MIDI merge function on or off. If this function is off, Pro Tools will treat MIDI like destructive audio. Anything you record will erase whatever take you had previously. Lastly, let's talk about memory locations. If you press Command and the number 5 on the numeric keypad, it will bring the memory locations window. To create a new memory location marker, press Enter on the numeric keypad and it will create a new marker. Once you're done naming it and setting up the options, it will show up in the memory locations window. Once it shows up in the list, look at the number on the left hand side. If you want to quickly navigate through your memory location markers, just press the period, then the number of the marker and press period again. This will take the playback head to the designated location. Now let's talk about some other things that can really help expedite our process. Number one, prep. The process of recording requires a whole lot of preparation and anticipation. One of the biggest things that you need to get used to as an engineer is working fast and understanding the formatting of what you're recording in order to perform it in an extraordinary fashion. Recording a vocal is not the same as recording a band because it's a lot denser, especially if there's unorthodox requirements like using reamping. Communicate with a project manager or producer before you start building a template for the session, even if it's just a mental roadmap. Number two, formatting. All music compositions have a structure and you should be aware of it. What's the time signature? What's the key? What's the overall groove like? Should I have the click in quarter notes, eighth notes, 16 notes? What are the sections of the composition? You should always add markers every time you talk about a musical section. It always happens. The artist or the producer asks, can we go to such and such part of the song, like the verse or the chorus? So less experienced engineers will take a long time finding it by guessing and zooming in and out. But if you want to take an extra step into upping your game, always do the markers first if you can, or assemble them as you go while getting cues from people who know the structure. Feel free to always ask around, is this a hook? Is this the verse? As you're talking to people, start making notes and add markers on the fly and also make sure things are on grid. The last thing you want is to have quirky sounds coming from unaligned effects like delays or having the click not match with the beat. That's it for now. We'll look at this and much more in our vocal recording lab, so be sure to check that out on our channel as well. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Visit us on the web at www.musicmastermind.tv and create your free membership and gain access to this and many more incredible videos regarding advanced recording, mixing, and music production happening right here inside the professional high-end studio environment. There's really a lot of cool content that you won't see anywhere else. That's it for now, but I'll see you very soon. Alex J here, over and out.